Yo, what's good? Big Z here, and today I'm going to be going over some of my favorite plugins that I use all the time in my own songs. So first of all, I'm not a believer that if you buy a ton of different plugins that it'll just make you a better producer automatically. But that being said, I do think that you should have one really good plugin in each category. And what I mean by categories is like one really good third party delay, one really good third party reverb one really good multiband compressor. Because I think there are a lot of third-party plugins that do a better job than the plugins that come with your DAW. But I don't think you need to buy a ton of different ones. I think you just need a really good one for each category. So I'm gonna go through the main categories of plugins that I think are necessary to have. And then I'm gonna tell you guys my favorite one in each category. Before I start listing off all these plugins, don't worry if you don't have the money to spend on all these plugins. You can definitely just use the ones in your DAW, but eventually if you wanna up your production game, then you're gonna wanna buy a few third-party plugins, but you're gonna wanna make the right decision on a really good one that you can use for the rest of your life. When you think about like a $100 plugin, if you're gonna use it on every song for the rest of your life, then it's totally worth the investment. So you gotta think about it that way. Also keep in mind that almost every plugin manufacturer offers free trials for their plugins. So you can probably go try out all of these plugins I'm about to tell you for free. They usually have like a week or like a 14 day free trial period. So I definitely encourage you guys to download a bunch of demos and try them out. And at the end of the trial period, if you find you're using that plugin all the time and you don't wanna live without it, then I say it's worth the investment. But if you're really not feeling it and you're not going for that plugin as much as you thought you would, then I would say don't buy it. But anyway, let's get started with my favorite plugins. So first of all, my favorite EQ out of all of them is FabFilter's Pro Q3. It's such a visual EQ, you can really pinpoint what's going on with the frequencies in your mix. It also has this new dynamic EQ function that's almost like a multiband compressor in a way that's really helpful for mixing. There's so many options for band shape and slope, it's really limitless how you can shape the tone of your sound with this EQ. So next up, my favorite reverb is Valhalla Room. I know you guys see me use this all the time. I use it on everything. I think it's just a really nice sounding reverb. There's not too many knobs to mess with, so it's pretty straightforward and easy to use right out of the box. There are some really good sounding reverb modes that you can choose from, and then you can tweak your settings from there with the decay, pre-delay, high cut, depth, and overall mix. So I really recommend this reverb to anyone that's sick of their DAW's stock reverb. So now for my favorite delay plugin, I'm gonna skip right over Soundtoy's Echo Boy and go to Echo Boy Jr. It's a little simpler version of their main plugin, Echo Boy, but I like Echo Boy Jr. a lot because you can really just add it on your track and get started right away shaping your delay how you want it. You can choose the echo mix, time, feedback, low cut, high cut, and choose from seven different delay modes really easily. So whenever I need a delay really fast, I always throw this plugin on there, just tweak some settings, and like 10 seconds later, I have a really nice sounding delay. Next up, you're gonna want a really good referencing plugin if you want your final mix to sound good. So my favorite referencing plugin right now is Adapter Metric AB. It has so many cool features beyond what a normal referencing plugin does. It has this loudness match that matches the volume automatically, and also you can see the EQ of the different songs together. You can see the stereo image of the different songs together. You can see the dynamics of the different songs together. And it even has these filters down here so you can hone in on one part of the frequency spectrum when referencing your track back and forth. Now this plugin is a little expensive, but there are some plugins that do pretty much the same thing for cheaper. One of them is by a company called Mastering the Mix. I think it's just called Reference by Mastering the Mix. And I think that's $50 as opposed to this one, which is $200. But anyway, I definitely recommend having a referencing plugin for when you're mixing. Now my favorite multiband compressor is definitely FabFilter's Pro MB. 
like all of FabFilter's products, it's a very visual plugin. So you can really see what you're doing to the sound. So it's really easy to set whatever range you want with the bands, and it's really easy to change the threshold, attack, and release of whatever band you're affecting. This has been a really helpful mixing tool that I use all the time in my own tracks. So now from multiband compressors to regular compressors, I have a couple different regular compressors that I use for different reasons. One of them is FabFilters Pro C. I know the Pro C2 is out now and is a lot better and more visual, but I like the Pro C a lot. It's really easy to use, so I use it all the time in my tracks. Um, another compressor I use a lot is the free one from X for Records called OTT. I probably overuse this one, but if you ever need to make a synth sound fatter right away, it's really good to just throw on there and put it like 20 to 30% and mess around with some of the settings. I know it's technically a multi-band compressor because there's three bands, but I'll just go ahead and throw it in the regular compressor category because that's more what I use it for. Now I would also recommend getting a good pitch shifting plugin because the pitch shifting plugins that come with your DAW I find are really bad and don't really do the job. So I think the best pitch shifter by far is Infected Mushrooms Manipulator. It sounds so musical, the pitch shifting it does, that you won't even notice any artifacts missing with the pitch shifting. So it's really easy to change the pitch and the format with this, and there's so many other crazy things you can do with this plugin. You can scroll through the presets to get some wild sounds, and just mess around and have fun with this plugin. I've been thinking about you. I've been thinking about you. Now my favorite sidechain plugin that I use all the time is Cable Guy's Volume Shaper. This is Volume Shaper 4. I know Volume Shaper 5 is out now, but it's a really good sidechain plugin that you can use to shape your sidechain really well. You can get really detailed with it and just get the sidechain exactly how you want it. Instead of just using compression to sidechain to your kick, I find using this plugin just helps me dial it in a lot better and get a lot more exact with it. I know I've talked about a lot of plugins so far, but there's only two categories left that I think are really crucial. So the second to last one is a transient designer. And my favorite transient designer is Waves Transx Multi. It's a multi-band transient designer, so you can use it just to add or remove attack from one specific frequency band. I find this is really helpful for like adding punch to kicks or adding some attack to a piano sound. So I find myself using this plugin all the time. So the last plugin category I'm gonna talk about are synthesizers. And you guys all obviously know what my favorite synth is. It's Serum, I use it in literally every one of my tracks, every one of my videos. It's way easier just to focus your energy and effort into getting really good at one synth. So for me, that happened to be Serum. For you, it could be Silent or Massive or something else, but for me it was Serum. I just like how visual the synth is, and I keep learning new things every time I open it, because there's so much you can do with it. Anyway, I hope this wasn't too boring. Hopefully this was kind of interesting to some of you guys. Like I said, I definitely recommend trying free demos before you actually buy a plugin to see if you'll actually use it in your workflow. So definitely check out some of those free demos. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Spotify below. And other than that, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.